A few days ago, Bianca Bustamante was involved in a very peculiar drama. She liked a post on Twitter that referred to Lance Stroll as Autism Stroll. You might wonder who exactly is Bianca? Well, she's a driver in the F1 Academy. Her Wikipedia page didn't offer much insight. In 2022, she participated in the W Series, securing a 15th position. She secured 27th position in the UAE Formula 4 Championship. While in the previous year's F1 Academy Championship, she finished in 7th place. She later recognized her mistake and issued an apology on the social media platform that caused even more stir in the drama. As we all know that these apologies are written more by the PR team for obvious reasons, but this apology message was a bit different. It began reasonably enough with, I truly deeply apologize and own up to my mistake, but then she makes a highly unexpected revelation about having an autistic brother. It's unclear what Bianca or her PR team intended by sharing this specific detail in the apology, but it certainly added an unusual twist to the situation. And we thought it was settled after her apology, but nope, she went ahead and posted a video featuring her autistic brother along with another message. I don't know, but this is just so unprofessional. Also, why is the video sideways? In the past, we've witnessed several drivers facing online backlash and the subsequent impact on their careers. It seems likely that Bianca and her team aim to steer clear of a similar scenario hence their extreme approach to the apology. Anyway, today's focus isn't on Bianca, but on Lance Stroll. So without wasting any more time, let's delve into Lance's racing journey thus far. Lance was born in Montreal, Canada and holds both Canadian and Belgian citizenship. Like numerous Formula One drivers, Lance began his racing journey through karting, securing numerous victories and championships in North America. In 2010, he joined the Ferrari Academy driver program. While researching Lance's junior career, I stumbled upon an intriguing championship. In 2014, Lance participated in the Florida Winter Series, organized by the Ferrari Driver Academy. Surprisingly, among the competitors were Max Verstappen, Nicholas Latifi, Antonio Fuoco, and Will Buxton. Although a non-championship series, Antonio Fuoco emerged as the winner, with Nicholas Latifi securing second place ahead of Max Verstappen, while Lance finished eighth. In that same year, Lance also competed in the Italian F4 and won the championship. Subsequently, in 2015, he won the Toyota Racing Series. His achievements continued in 2016 when he clinched the European Formula 3 title. In 2017, he made the leap from Formula 3 to Formula 1 in a similar fashion to Max Verstappen. He joined Williams Racing, a competitive midfield team at that time, which secured fifth place in the constructors' standings that year and Felipe Massa was his teammate. Massa is a really good driver, so it wasn't going to be easy for Lance. But in his rookie year, he actually did pretty well, finishing just behind Massa in 12th place with a mere three-point difference between them. However, he faced challenges with consistency, encountering five DNFs during the season, and at times seemed struggling to keep the car on track. Yet, his remarkable podium in Baku showcased his potential. Notably, he displayed strong performances in Italy and Mexico, Stroll gained more positions on the opening lap than any other driver that year. He remained with Williams in 2018, but unfortunately that year's Williams car performed poorly, ending up at the bottom of the constructors' standings with only seven points. Lance finished in 18th place for the season, while his teammate Sergei Sorotkin occupied the final position in the standings. In 2019, he moved to Racing Point, a team previously known as Force India, which his father acquired after the team faced administration. At Racing Point, Lance joined Sergio Perez as a teammate. Racing Point maintained its status as a competitive midfield team, consistently vying for points and occasional podiums. Germany was the highlight of the season for Lance, where he finished fourth, marking the team's highest position for the season. While Sergio finished the season in 10th place, Lance concluded in 15th. That year, he was outqualified by Perez in 18 out of 21 races, in 2020, both drivers continued with Racing Point, steering the notorious pink Mercedes. Stroll showed strong performance with a third-place qualifying position in Hungary, leading to a fourth-place finish in the race. He continued this momentum with another fourth-place result in Spain and clinched a podium in Monza. Despite a robust start, Stroll's performance wavered during the mid-season, collecting only two points across seven races. He then took his first-ever pole position in the Turkish Grand Prix, he concluded the season strongly with a podium in Bahrain and a points finish in Abu Dhabi. Throughout the year, Stroll encountered five DNFs through no fault of his own. While Sergio Perez attained an impressive fourth place in the standings, 
Stroll failed to break into the top 10, finishing 11th overall. Although the team initially secured third place in the constructors' standings, a 15-point penalty resulted in their descent to fourth, trailing behind McLaren. This deduction stemmed from the pink Mercedes legality controversy that affected the team gravely in the constructors' fight. In 2021, Racing Point was rebranded as Aston Martin with Sebastian Vettel partnering with Lance. Despite the team adopting a more prestigious name, their car lacked competitiveness, leading to a seventh place finish in the constructors' standings. Within the team, Lance was outperformed by his four-time world champion teammate, resulting in their individual standings of 12th and 13th, respectively. Lance's standout performance of the season occurred in Qatar, where he achieved a sixth place finish. In 2022, the Silverstone-based team faced yet another challenging season, again finishing seventh in the constructors' standings. Stroll suffered three DNFs and struggled to score points in the races. The introduction of new regulations didn't help either, and once again he was outperformed by his teammate. Towards the end of 2022 season, Vettel declared his retirement, leading to the signing of Fernando Alonso to fill the vacant second seat at Aston Martin, Now the 2023 season is the one to look for as the Aston Martin car showed promising competitiveness, ranking as the second best car during the initial half of the season. The season kicked off positively for Lance with a sixth place in Bahrain, despite recovering from a wrist injury. However, an early exit in Jeddah due to an engine issue interrupted his momentum. He bounced back with a commendable fourth place in Australia, capitalizing on Sainz's penalty and chaotic incidents ahead. A respectable seventh place followed in Baku, although Alonso's podium finishes contrasted with Lance's consistent point scoring for the team. Miami posed challenges, resulting in a 12th place finish without scoring any points. Monaco brought more difficulties as Lance couldn't qualify for Q3 and struggled badly in the tricky conditions during the race. Spain was decent with a 6th place finish. And over the next 10 races, Stroll struggled badly, accumulating only 7 points compared to Alonso's 79 points, highlighting a significant performance gap. In Brazil, he surprised everyone with an impressive third place in qualifying and fifth place finish in the race, followed by another strong fifth place finish in Las Vegas. His season concluded with a point finish in Abu Dhabi, securing 10th place in the standings. While Alonso managed to nab eight podiums in the AMR 23, Lance failed to score even one podium finish. We all know that Fernando is an assertive driver, boasting the most extensive experience on the grid. With two world championships and over 100 podiums under his belt, it was a bit expected that he'd hold a significant advantage over Stroll. Now onto the questions, did Lance underperform in 2023 in a competitive machinery compared to his teammate? Yes, and the same applies to Perez. However, this doesn't imply that Perez or Lance are suddenly inadequate drivers. Drivers sometimes encounter challenges not only in adjusting to the evolving technical demands of the car, but also in dealing with the mental aspect of trying to perform at the same level as their highly skilled teammates. Is Lance Stroll in Formula One only because of his father? There isn't a very simple answer to that. He was great in karting, won the Formula Three championship, and with the backing from his father, got a chance to race in Formula One. Nobody is denying that, but you've got to understand Formula One is not just racing, it's also a business. Many teams rely on sponsorship money, sometimes facilitated by the drivers themselves. However, entering Formula One also necessitates meeting the technical super license points and experience requirement, a criterion Lance completely fulfilled based on his merits. Um, And what most people don't understand is the road to Formula One doesn't have a straightforward path. Even if you win every junior series, there's no certainty that you'll drive in Formula One. Numerous factors must align for a driver to secure one of the limited 20 seats available. Does Lance Stroll deserve to be in Formula One? Absolutely. The guy won the F3 championship and immediately jumped to Formula 1 and performed well. That doesn't take away the fact that there are other great drivers who also deserve a seat in Formula 1. The challenge for new drivers to enter Formula 1 right now lies in the restricted number of seats owing to the limited number of teams. And the smaller teams depend a lot on the sponsorship money to operate. While some are content with the existing team count, others advocate for welcoming new teams onto the grid. I believe Formula 1 could benefit from a couple more teams providing opportunities for other talented drivers to showcase their abilities and talents in the most advanced race cars on the planet. Could Aston Martin have finished higher in the constructors' standings in 2023? Yes, there's no denying it. If Lance had contributed closer to Alonso's performance, Aston Martin could have easily aimed for third or even second place. Another question that gets thrown around a lot is, does Lance Stroll have a contract? Well, his dad owns the team, so take a guess. Now let's talk about Stroll's weaknesses. 
I've observed a few aspects in Lance's performance. Although he exhibited a few strong displays in 2023, occasional outstanding performances won't suffice in the long term. Similar to Perez, Stroll seems to face challenges in qualifying, struggling with one lap pace. This often places him at a disadvantage, starting races from lower positions. Yet, when he secures a decent qualifying position, he frequently finishes with notable points. Improving the consistency is crucial. Stroll encounters difficulties at specific circuits that require attention for enhancement. Consistent, strong performances is what distinguishes top drivers from the rest. If he can refine his qualifying skills and sustain a certain level of consistency, and if Aston Martin maintains competitiveness similar to the previous year, there's potential for Stroll to break into the top six in the standings. Realistically speaking, challenging for the championship might not be feasible in the current competitive environment. However, with the right car and progression, perhaps in a few years, with a bit of maturity, Stroll could find himself in contention for the championship. I know a lot of people would like to disagree with me on this, but personally, I think Stroll has a much better understanding of the car now, and if he maintains this momentum in 2024, he could achieve some remarkable results. I firmly believe that 2024 will mark Stroll's best season yet. And on that note, it's time to end the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. Also, comment down below what are your predictions for Stroll's 2024 season, and I'll see you guys in the next video.